Edge is a position where there's a lot that can go right and there's a lot that can go wrong. I originally thought it was going to be pretty simple. There's only two spots in your starting team compared to three for mids and wing fullbacks, for example. But there's a lot of guys that are on buy in round 13 that we already have and probably want to hold through that origin period. So we either need a bunch of guys with jewels or we need to start looking at some other options to fix those round 13 and round 19 buys in particular probably. We've got a lot of guys like Hosking and potentially Katoa, uh, Katoa Loyero, um, Wilton with the round 13 and most of them have the round 19 buy as well. So before I go through the rest of these, the main point of this video is, in summary, as with the other videos, there's going to be probably three or four or five options in this position that you're going to have through this origin period. You can do it with almost any team. You just need to plan and set up well to make sure that you can check which buyers are where and if the players are going to cover all of those. So to go back to where we started, have a look at this. There's a lot of options. And even in Roosters, I haven't even listed any here. There could be the, the Butcher Brothers, Egan Butchers, doing what we thought he would at the beginning of the season. Angus Crichton is dropping stacks of coin, being eased back in from that um, long layoff. If he doesn't play Origin, he's going to be an absolute monster of a buy, but we can't plan for that. There's just almost every club, probably, except probably Broncos with Kate Will and Ricky, has somebody that we can target through this period. Okay, so to simplify it, we all have probably at least two or three or four or even more of this bunch of edges that we're starting with. Jackson Ford going to be very useful through round 13. Couchman and Ben Murdoch with Silla, they just haven't been doing much in our teams, but if you can hold them to round 13 and then they can play that spot and you get rid of them, that's a strategy as well. Guys like Host as well, if you're holding for that long, but look at all these guys with the round 13 buy. A lot of them play round 16. So round 16, we probably don't need to plan for too much because if we have too many, especially if they're not dual position, like maybe um, Pangai Jr. and they can go up in your mids, you're going to be wasting points. So you need to mostly focus on guys who will play round 13 and a couple will play round 19 because especially Hosking, I think, is going to be one we want to hold through this period. So here's a couple of guys who are dual edges, but probably not edges often in our starting team. So they're probably either going to be on our bench, in our mids, or in our centers. So Bird, Lemuelu, very, very likely going to be in our team for a good while, if you have them. But there is probably going to be a lot of center and wing fullback issues, so you really need a strong center wing fullback. Um, if you're going to use Bird and Lemuelu in your round 13, round 19 teams. Hopgood, Eels in general, as I keep mentioning, they're fantastic because they have each of the origin weeks, round 13, 16, 19, and he can play in your mids edges. If he's there and Madison isn't, I don't see how you can't have him in your team. He's He pumped out a good one this week. Um, he got an 86, I think, and it's tempting to get on now. I'm not sure what... It's the best strategy. In all honesty, you could get on now um, and hope that he gets solid minutes with um, RCG out. But he he kind of didn't do that much with Paulo, so you can go either way on Hopgood. Now, there's a bunch of non-origin keepers or elite guns that you should probably look at considering for your round 13 in particular and for the rest of origin period so that you can cover those other additional rounds as well. So if you have a couple of round 13 guys, you can then look to bring in Nikora or Azai Papali'i. I probably wouldn't bring them in for round 13 or before, to be honest, because we just have so many round 13 guys, it's unlikely that you're going to have a full squad in round 13 if you have one of them. I think they're very good round 14 or perhaps round 16 pickups and maybe even round 19, just depending on price and what strategy you're going to go for. Any time is a good time to buy a gun unless you aren't going to be able to field a team. So probably not not 13, um, but probably any time from then on. Sean Lane, he's still falling a bit in price. He had a 60 the other week, but came back with a 40 last week. He took a while to warm up last year and then went um, really strong through that mid to late season period. So monitor the monitor the dip for Lane, 
and he might be an option round 13 or maybe a little later on. Olukawatu, I think he's probably going to play Origin. They're just too many injuries going on and too many too many things going wrong for the New South Wales Fords. You've got Angus Crichton, who's only just got back to the league, only played two games of about 50 minutes. You've got um, Liam Martin, out for another two, three weeks with a hamstring injury, I think. You've got um, Campbell Gillard gone, so you probably need to move a prop into there, and Madison might go onto the bench or somebody. But there's just so many holes that Olukuatu is probably one of the main candidates to fill. Oh, yeah, especially with Colm Tungy also out probably until about round 16. Tyson Frizzell has played Origin in the past, but has seemed to be overlooked a little bit in recent years. I think there's a better chance he'll be selected this year than the last couple, particularly because he's really carried that Knights team around a little bit this year. He's been putting up some good scores. If you don't have him, he is starting to get expensive now, about 740k, I think, something like that anyway. Yeah, um, an absolutely fantastic one. If you don't have, any, have too many Eels, Sea Eagles, and Knights, because they all share that annoying round 14 minor buy. Helam Lukey, he could be very strong buy with... Jeremiah Nanai out for a month suspended. You've got a couple of other Bruce, um, Cowboys injuries, sorry, with Tamalolo out for a while. Cotter's going to play at Origin most likely. And Luciano Leilua is still stood down and probably will have a few weeks at least in New South uh, in Cup before he comes back to the main squad. So Luki's probably going to be one you're going to want for early Origin. I don't know whether he'll make it to round 19, but he should be an interesting mid-ranger anyway. Hudson Young... He's come up a little bit in price now, but he's still probably the cheapest out of all of these three. Lane might go a little bit below him, but Young's on the way up. Been doing pretty well, getting some good scores, and he loves to go over for a try and push his sort of 45-50 up to a 60-plus score. He plays round 13, which is important. Misses round 16. I don't mind that personally, because he plays 13 and 19, which guys like Hosking Lawyer uh, don't. And he misses round 16, so you won't double up on that round if you have two other guys who are there. All right, so, so those are some of the options that you can look at. These are going to be very big monitors. Chuck a star on most of those in your team so that you can keep an eye on them. So in all honesty, in all likelihood, we're probably going to be keeping Hosking. Unless something drastically goes wrong, he's been putting up high 40s the last few weeks. Not ideal, but... There's been some weird games, and he's also um, had a little bit of time off in that really tough game the other day. I think Hosking, out of all this crew, is probably going to be the one you want to hold. Wilton, very likely as well. He had a 30-something the other week, but bounced back with a 67. He's just proving that he's probably not a final team keeper, but he's averaging just over 50 and is a very strong round 16, round 19 option. That's really nice cover, um, probably until about round 20, where you looked at... Upgrade him to somebody like maybe Fafita. Loyero. He was someone we were looking at as a sell a couple of weeks ago, but back-to-back -back 50s, he's come off the buy now, and no um, Eliezer Katoa. He could be actually a strong hold, depending if he can keep that form up. I don't know whether he will be there through this whole period, but I reckon he could be one you could hold through to round 19 if he keeps scoring okay. So... These are the main guys you've probably got at least one, two, or even three of still in your team. Round 13 needs to be fixed. So how do we do that? Most of us have some of these, as we've already mentioned. Ford can play in the middles, but you can use his dual to play edge. Bird, you can use his dual, Lemuelu, same. Host, if you have him. And then sort of the last-ditch effort, BMM and Couchman, which after Couchman's effort on the weekend with a try, I don't, I don't think he's going to get there. Okay, so round 13 and round 16. So guys that play these first two buys, doesn't help this much yet, but that can possibly be a later strategy, like a final. And that's the sort of strategy you'd go for a final team keeper in round 19. So you'd buy one of these and then you'd buy like um, a Nikora or a Papali'i, maybe a lane if they're bottom out in that round 19 to fix that last little um, origin week. But in particular, I really like Luki from here. And these are definitely big monitors going into Origin. Young, I covered just before. Really nice option because he misses round 16, so you don't double up if you've got Hosking plus somebody else. Round 16 and 19 options. Nikora and Papali'i and TPJ. 
Pangai Jr., if you have him, I'd, I really don't know. Hey, he's so borderline because you ride the roller coaster with him, but man, that, that was a big dip on the weekend. Hey, a teen score in nearly 50 minutes. That's that's pretty dreadful, to be honest. No offloading at all. He, he did that offload that ended up resulting in a turnover and he got taken off straight after. And I wonder if he got told to stop doing that because he didn't do it at all in his second stint. But yes, if if he's in your team, you can probably sell him, I guess. But there's a very good chance that he'll bounce back and get you a 70 or an 80 in the next couple of weeks and recover in price. He's just going to be that sort of guy. Um, Lane Hopgood, fantastic cover the whole way through. Especially Hopgood with that mid and edge duel. I love him if Madison's not there. If Madison is there... It's it's gonna be it's gonna be dicey. He might only get that 50, 60 minutes and those sort of 45 to 50, 55 scores, which is okay, but when you're buying him back at 700 k not not ideal, but anyway. Yeah. Um Bird Lemuelu can cover around 13, 19 if they need, but especially round 19 is gonna be tough on the wing fullbacks. Maybe not one to absolutely rely on. So going down. Let's, let's have a look at an example that we might do. We've got Hosking um, as one of these round 13 guys that we keep through to the end of Origin or the end of the year. Let's say you've got Jacob Host and Jackson Ford. They're pretty common They're pretty common um, options to have at this point. There's probably a very large chunk of people that have these three players at the moment. So that works around 13, around 14, around 15. One of these guys can go on the bench. Probably Ford or probably forward in the middles, I'd say, or forward on the bench. And then you sell both in round 16 when they both have the buy, and you use that money to get a basement and someone like a Papali'i. Then you've got two really strong guns. This does rely on another duel, somebody like a Pangai Jr. or a Bird or a Hopgood. But, I mean, if you don't have Hopgood here already, um, you probably aren't looking to pick him up here if you're buying like a Papali'i. So Bird, probably one of the guys you'd look to do that with. Um, or TPJ, I would suspect. Anyway, next example. What if you don't have um, f Host? A lot of people are probably going to be looking to sell Host. He, 31 on the weekend. That's more like what we wanted, but we probably wanted high 30s, low 40s, and that's... There's a long way to go before Colm Tungy's back, but it, it still isn't ideal. He's not doing anything in your team yet, and it's going to be slow cash making. If you want to do that, very good chance he makes uh, 100k from now um, in the long term. In the short term, he's just not going to do a lot for your team. Probably want to loop each week as well, based on the last couple of weeks. So instead, we buy Hudson Young. Whether we buy him earlier, like we buy him now, for example, in round 10, then you carry him through until he's around 16 by. I would still suggest you have him from then on. But yes, Ford, probably one you want to have for that round 13. In this one, we've kept Preston. Preston plays round 19, which is important. And with Young on the buy as well, it's if you're planning to buy Young, that's a very good excuse or just reason, not even excuse, um, to hold Preston at least until round sort of 17 um, given that he plays the round 16. Ford, in this situation, can be sold, and you don't even need to buy another edge. In this situation, you can just carry through with these three. They have buyers on different weeks, and only one week you're going to need one of them on the interchange. I think that's fine. There's eight interchange spots, and two out of the 13 are edges. That's, that's plenty of real room. You can probably even have more than that, to be honest. But this is sort of a minimal backline... Uh, sorry, baseline team that you can go through with options that pop up along the way. There's going to be cash cows that pop up um, through injuries. There might be other mid-ranges you want to jump on. But if you have this backbone, you can be a little bit flexible. You might sell forward to one of them in round 16, for example. But that still works. Strategy number two. If you don't have any of these guys, if Hosking starts averaging 43 from now on, starts losing all that money, if Preston continues to lose money and you want to sell these guys or have sold or don't have them, 
good chance you're going to need a much different strategy. So Heal and Lukey, as I keep saying, probably going to be a good option. I don't know whether he's going to score well this week um, or even maybe next week. Coming off a hamstring injury, they have a high um, re-injury risk in the first two weeks. And if they don't, after that, it's pretty much just uh, normal. Base, back to the baseline, the average incidence that you'll tear a in any game um, at all. So Lane, Lukey and Ford, that's a good strategy to go for. If Lane is cheap and still um, going well by then, you pick him up. Maybe, I don't know, round 11, round 12. Something like that. Ford can play in your mids. That'll, that's probably a very good strategy to use because round 13, you're going to have a couple of origin guys like Haas away. And, and you can see how it starts to fit together. So if you have Lane and Lukey, if you have no round 13 edges, that probably means Ford is in your mids. That probably means Haas can be held easier for at least that early season pit. So you can just see how those flow on effects work. Make sure that you just have a look at your team, have a sit down and think, how will this affect my team if I sell this player um, long-term? In different positions, it can affect it. As I showed last video, I think I was thinking of bringing in somebody in the mids. I was thinking of bringing in Hopgood, didn't unfortunately. And that meant I could push a duel um, to edge and that meant I didn't have to bring Bird up and it meant I didn't have to uh, make my wing fullback weaker. So there's huge flow on effects through duels and just other positions. So this strategy works well. Um, Lane on the round 14 buy, Ford shouldn't be interchanged there actually, but anyway, I've just left it that way. Round 15, Lukey's on the buy. Round 16, Lane and Lukey are still there. Ford probably gets sold. You can just go with Lane and Lukey for that round 17. Um, why have I got that? That's a bit of a blunder actually. And round, yeah, you'd buy him round 18, I think. Did the... Yeah, they've got to buy round 17, Decora Papali'i. Yeah, so you'd buy him round um, you buy him round 18 instead, actually. But anyway, so that's another strategy that works. Another one that you can use if you've got no common round 13 buy guys is Hudson Young and Frizzell. Great one. They don't share a buy through this whole thing. So you're going to have at least one of them, possibly um, two for a lot of them. And another one that works well is TPJ if you're willing to ride the roller coaster or if you've bought on a bit of a dip or you can just hold him. TPJ also has the flexibility with his mid duel. So in any weeks that he doubles up, he can be in the mids. I've messed this up again. I must have... Uh, well, yeah, I must have wanted to put him in round 15 when Young and Frizzell are just going to be your edges. TPJ's either interchange or bench. So yeah, in this one, TPJ would be your edge with Frizzell and then round 17, round 18, yeah. Round 18, TBJ, edge interchange, uh, mid interchange, something like that. And you can see just these three, they work quite well. Um, three sort of mid-range to low-end keeper guys. That's not going to take up too much of your cap. There's not going to be too much sitting on the sideline. I like that strategy a fair bit, actually. It's just that if you don't have Frizzell already, it makes it a bit harder. So Mark from... NRL Fantasy Amateurs might go for something very similar to this strategy. I've heard him talking up Frizzell a lot. He started with him. Um, and I'd say he'd probably probably looking to target someone like Hudson Young the next couple of weeks, particularly if he's scoring quite well. Last strategy is... It's almost a head-to-head -head strategy, but not really. It's if you've got an origin gun. If for some reason you have Fafida, which... Honestly, it looks pretty tempting right now. He's just absolutely blowing blowing teams off the park, and I don't even think he scored a try yet. He's putting up elite keeper levels, and we know the moment he goes over, he's just going to turn into an 80-plus um, machine. Round 13 by and Origin. It's good that he gets those round 13, round 16 um, buys out of the way because of Origin. He was never going to play them anyway. Only misses the one extra round, so... Titans are one of the top three teams for origin buys, along with Panthers and with the Roosters. They have a good backup in most of these rounds, and two of their buys are just used up in that origin week anyway. So good for Fafita. If you have him, that's great. You can hold him, but you will need a different strategy. You will need much better cover. So you'd probably hold on to someone like Preston, 
great round 16, round 19 cover. You'd look to hold someone like Lukey probably through round 16 and Jackson Ford there as well. So, And then in round 19, when you've probably got rid of Lukey and you've only got Preston, that's the time to jump on a Nikura or a Papali'i or something like that. That's going to be a lot of money on the sidelines. You're going to have um, Fafida out for round 19. And Preston and Nikora are going to be have to brought in. That's going to be a lot of edge money, but I mean, it's one of the best strategies to go for if you have an origin gun like Fafida. Another origin gun might be Angus. If Angus starts scoring really well, if he just starts carving it up and looks like the Angus of old origin Angus and they pick him for origin, you might have bought him for low 600s, for example, in round 11 or 12, hoping that he'd miss and then, well, he played, for example. But if you have Angus, very similar situation here. I think it's about, yeah, he's the buy around 19 instead of 16. And then you'd need a slightly different strategy because um, you don't want to overload round 16. So someone like Preston, you might not hold. And somebody like... Hudson Young, who plays 13 and 19, would be better than Preston in that situation. All right, so there's five examples that you can go through. Five different, completely different ways you can look at your team and plan for something like that, or just examples that help you figure out your team if it's something startlingly, startlingly different. If you've got someone like Wilton, I haven't included Wilton here, but he has the same buys as um, Nikora. So if you have Nikora and Wilton together, it's going to be really rough on the buys. I wouldn't buy both of them. Just simple things like that. Just, just be smart about it. Notice that there are going to be buys. Try not to double up on them because then you'll need a lot of players and a lot of cash sitting on the sidelines certain weeks. So things like the round 13 here, tough. But if you want for feeder or you've got that gun for feeder, it's just going to be necessary um, in that situation. So are there any other options that we can look to do through this um, edge period? Yes. To be honest, um, Olokuatu, as I mentioned before, if he doesn't make origin, fantastic. Hopgood, if he's going to get really good minutes, if Maddo's not there, fantastic option. You probably want him in mids, especially for round 16, but in general, just fantastic stuff. Lamuelu, after cracking out a 93 on the weekend... All, uh, all our fears have mostly been dispelled. If you if you have him, that's great. If you don't, he's an awkward price, but honestly, kind of tempting to still bring in as that center edge um, gun, it looks like at the moment. And he also covers round 13 and round 19. So you might have him instead of Hudson Young. Just make sure that you've got a bunch of other really good centers and wing fullbacks. So maybe, maybe Lemuel who sits on your bench and scores from there, and then you can just move him in. Something like that. But there's a lot of strategies Bateman might become good, for example. He's scored decently well the last three weeks, still losing a lot of cash. He's below 700k now. Just hasn't shown that he's elite option yet, but 80 minutes the last three games, very good signs for him. Guys like Sitili Tupanua from the Roosters, he's coming off an ACL um, rupture. He's dropping a bit of cash. Guys like Nat and Egan Butcher, especially Nat Butcher, if you have him, a lot probably have sold Egan. There are a lot of options. There's probably 15 on this list, at least. There's, you cannot really be stuck in this position. You just have to make sure that the guys you bring in aren't just going to sabotage, sabotage each other. You don't want to bring in, you don't want to have Hosking and Papali'i and Preston all on the sidelines around 13. That's 2 million bucks just in the edge position. You can't do that. Make sure that you've only got ideally one on a buy each week if you can, or if you have two, such as in the situation with um, Fafita and Preston, something like that, that um, you have adequate cover and aren't spending too much money or wasting too many points in that position. So have a look at the buys, especially some cash cows leading up to Origin. There could be some really interesting options I just don't think there's going to be a lot of relevant edge cash cows this year come Origin. I think they're mostly going to be the keeper or mid-range options. But uh, we'll see when we get there. There's likely going to be injuries and changes to this list 
options are going to be must-haves that we haven't even thought of. That's just fantasy. We can't predict everything, but we try and predict as much as we can. All right, guys, I would definitely save this save this list as a bit of a picture and have a look at it and just know which guys are going to overlap for you. And as I, as I was mentioning before, duels are nice. In summary, pick up a couple, couple of keeper options, a couple of mid-ranges that work together. Just make them work together. That's all you need to do. Make sure they don't sabotage each other. All right, guys. Halves are next. That's going to be an interesting one. Sean Johnson, um, we're going to probably have... Manu might even get dual. Probably not rounds 13, though. We're going to have Cleary. We're going to talk about Hines. We're going to talk about a couple of other guys, but like her edges, probably one of the more complicated ones because there's so many ways you can go about it. But because there's so many ways you can go about it, it's probably also one of the easier ones. So don't panic about edges. There's a lot of backups if things go wrong. All right, guys. Have a good one.